1 million kina allocated to contain COVID-19. Former Prime Minister cleared of abuse of office charges. And judge inspect isolation sites in Medang. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Friday's news. The Southern Highlands Provincial Government has allocated 1 million kina towards addressing the COVID situation in the province. With the possibility of a provincial lockdown, Governor William Powey says more efforts will focus on containing the virus, awareness and vaccination rollout in parts of Southern Highlands. Governor Powey also urged his people to come forward for vaccination and adhere to COVID restrictions imposed by the National Control Centre and Provincial Health Authority. And Speaking in Port Moresby, Governor Poe said COVID-related deaths in Southern Highlands is a worrying trend. He said there is a possibility of a lockdown as more assessment is done by the local health authority. One million kina has been allocated to address the situation. The Southern Provincial Executive Council and uh, government has uh, taken some initiatives to uh, firstly... Uh, release 1 million as I speak in the interim period. 1 million from the San Hans Provincial Government has been released to the San Hans Provincial Health Authority, Dr. Biresi and his team, who have a provincial coordination team in Mendi. And uh, San Hans Provincial Executive Council will uh, consider the possibility of declaring Southern Highlands as a lockdown. Oil sets has also come on board to assist Southern Highlands with testing machines, PPEs and oxygen concentrators. Governor Powi also declared Nipa, Mendi and Yalibu Hospital to be isolation wards to cater for COVID patients. Uh, so once we isolate people who are infected with coronavirus, then we will uh, deal with the uh, uh, spread of that virus and try and contain. As, it, as uh, you know, we live in communities and in villages. And once a person in the family detects corona, it's very frightening. And the level of spread that it will have make major implications to the province. And uh, uh, I'm equally concerned as the provincial uh, government, we have uh, put in place measures to deal with this. Uh, today, as I speak, I have announced a tripartite agreement with the prime minister, the minister for health, and the Southern Highlands Provincial Government to deal with Southern Highlands as a matter of urgency. While other efforts to contain the deadly virus get started, Governor Powi has urged all to get vaccinated. He also dispelled rumors stating the vaccination is a form of protection. Powi says a vaccination rollout will be organized. Who said to one of them something blown? But me blown by current vaccines come long. All vaccine, uh, vaccinations are uh, good, blown long, me protective. Governor Powi and a team from oil search will be assessing the situation and begin efforts to contain the virus starting next week. Long Fiplo Electrus, Long Southern Islands, Yellow Pangia, Kagua Rave, Imbongu, Mendi Munhi, and Nipa Kurubu. So, I mean, I want to play, play something. Southern Islands people, different levels of leadership in the church or local community, in a provincial administration, provincial government. Now you get this little framework. Now we will channel in assistance, support from Oil Search Foundation as well as provincial government to deal with this plus sick and work to kill him. Die all man, Mary blow you so you must take him hit lo this plan. I'm Jack Lopave Jr. National MTV News. Former Prime Minister and member for Yalibu Pangia, Peter O'Neill, was cleared of his charge of abuse of office relating to the purchase of Israeli generators. The National Court handed down the verdict on official corruption charges yesterday. The National Court yesterday ruled that the former Prime Minister and member for Yalibu Pangia, Peter O'Neill, not guilty and cleared of the charge under Section 92, subsection 1 of the Criminal Code. I'm pleased that the court has uh, ruled fairly uh, and certainly found that uh, I have done nothing wrong. I have acted in public interest, interest of our people. And I think it's well documented and well known throughout the country 
that uh, supply of power uh, to our people, to their houses, to their businesses, has always been a big challenge for our country. Mm. And I did not act alone. I had cabinet that endorsed the purchase. I had parliament that approved the funds. And I wrote a one single letter and for which uh, I was being uh, charged and uh, labeled as uh, that a corrupt deal, that we have misappropriated the monies. When parliament has approved it, and when uh, National Executive Council and the ministers have approved uh, all this transaction. O'Neill was charged with one count of abuse of office whilst serving as Prime Minister in 2013 over a letter dated December 4th, 2013, addressed to Diary Vela, acting Treasury Secretary at the time, to identify 50 million kina for the purchase of two 15 megawatt diesel turbine power generators from Israel. The state alleged that in doing so, the then Prime Minister abused the authority of his office and acted arbitrarily and prejudicially to the rights and interests of the state as there were no supporting documents to authorize the claim. In presiding over the matter, Justice Kennings identified three issues. One, did the accused abuse the authority of his office? Two, did the accused do or direct to be done in an arbitrary act? And three, was the act directed by the accused prejudicial to the rights of the state? Per the decision yesterday, none of the contentious elements of the offence have been proven by the state or the prosecution could not establish elements of the case. It's been merely, uh, as far as I can see, a political witch hunt that has been going on for the, for the last two and a half years since this Marape government has come into uh, position. Uh, they have not been focused on running the country. They have lost sight of uh, what the challenges that the country is facing. We have a, a huge challenge that is before us, but they continue to engage in petty issues like this. Uh, when we have done the right thing, uh, they have forced public servants. I feel sorry for the policemen and the public prosecutors who have uh, been forced to prosecute this case, make arrests, because it suits the political purpose. Uh, and that is that they want to shame leaders and try and make sure that these leaders don't run for elections. Kilawani National, MTV News. The Pacific Governor Alan Bird has echoed stronger calls for the government to present tough stance against leading countries that produce more pollution into the atmosphere. Governor Bird said now is the time to ensure Papua New Guinea is supported well by necessary funding, much talked about by developed nations to address climate change effects. The Pacific Governor made these remarks while supporting the bill to amend the country's Climate Change Act of 2015. In yesterday's parliament session, the Environment Minister presented the bill to amend the Climate Change Act. Governor Baird, who was among the few leaders that supported the changes, said PNG has no time to waste and must make a bold statement to the world leaders in the coming COP26 meet in Glasgow in Scotland. We should go with some concrete suggestions for the planet and for the leaders of the net polluting countries. And that should be to offer to stop all logging in our country. And for that, part of this $200 billion that the world keeps talking about needs to be given in consideration so we can replace what we are losing if we shut down the logging operations for good. In 2014, a decision by the National Executive Council was approved to cater for changes and align relevant policy framework by the Environment and Conservation Department. Or a governor who will be part of the PNG contingent says a stronger voice will be tabled at the meet. Governor Bird, I assure you, we are not going there just to shake hands and talk to people. We are going to speak to the world and let them know that yes, we have this forest and this amazing biodiversity, but let's trade. We may be cash poor, but we're natural resource rich. You may be cash rich, but you're natural resource poor. Let's trade. Western Highlands Governor Pius Wingti also backed the bill stating PNG must act now to save its environment. He says if nothing serious is done, many communities will be victims of climate change. He says this will also have effects on the country's economy. 
Winky says the law must support more efforts to protect the environment. And Minister, I supported your program and we have been advising all our schools to plant trees and that is the program for the future because if we do it successfully here, we can also trade and I believe the other developing countries could assist us on this because we will make a big contribution towards saving this planet. Environment Minister Wera Mori says the law is a political voice for the country. Mori says CCDA with other development partners and state agencies will be at the forefront to implement objectives of the amended Climate Change Act of 2015. My ministry and CCDA will create climate change ambassadors' roles and voice to mobilize actions and have this envoys based in Europe, America and Asia to grasp opportunities emanating from the European Green Deal and American Green Deal as well. I therefore seek your support in endorsing the amendment to the Climate Change Management Act 2015. Jack Lopawa, Jr., National MTV News. Since the rise of COVID-19 in Papua New Guinea, the People's Republic of China, through its embassy, has played a vital role by providing medical equipment. Today, the embassy presented about 85,000 kina worth of equipment to the medical staff at Port Moresby General Hospital. Jamie Hara reports. As PNG faces its third wave of COVID-19, Diplomatic countries are continuously stepping up to help with adequate funds and equipment for medical staff and hospitals within the country. Today, the People's Republic of China, through its embassy, presented batches of medical supplies to Port Mosby General Hospital. This included personal protective equipment such as surgical masks, gloves and gowns worth around 85,000 kina. Representing the Chinese Embassy Medical Staff Team was Head of Consultant Cardiologist Dr. Chen Guazu, who said their country is happy to show support to fight this pandemic. On behalf of the China Embassy and the China Medical Team, we really appreciate your endeavor and the persistence. The doctors, nurses, and all of our medical workers are fighting against the pandemic at the very front line. His we want to show our support and uh, care. This batch of the medical supplies is the uh, majority um, personal uh, protective equipment, including 10,000 uh, uh, surgical masks, 10,000 uh, gloves, uh, 5,000 uh, gowns, and uh, other hand wash, uh, sanitizer, uh, etc. It's around maybe 85,000 uh, 85, kilos here. We certainly hope uh, with this uh, uh, our fellows can get protected while saving patients' lives. In response during this presentation, POMGEN CEO Dr. Paki Molumi acknowledged the Chinese government through their embassy for their continued support POMGEN and PNG's health sector has received during the crisis. So on this occasion, I want to thank the Chinese medical team. Uh, in the first stage, the, the Chinese government, the People's Republic of China, through our embassy in Port Mosby, have supported Port Mosby General Hospital in a very big way. In the first search, they've donated one million kina. We have provided a full equitable of that report back to the Chinese government through the Chinese embassy. Not only that, they have supported equipments not only at Port Mosby General Hospital, but throughout the country as well. With the equipments now on hand, the Chinese embassy believes Port Mosby General Hospital can overcome the COVID-19 situation. The medical team from the embassy is also appealing to the public to follow COVID-19 protocols to reduce the spread of the virus. Jamie Harrow, National MTV News. National MTV News continues with more stories after these messages. Stay with us.
Welcome back. Panamax Pacific PG Limited, under its Waswas -was brand, organized an event with the Lay Secondary School today to mark Global Hand Washing Day. The students participated in a 30 second hand washing demonstration following the eight universal hand washing steps. The demonstration was led by representatives from Panamax. Panamax marketing coordinator Simonta Honey said the company has a partnership with the school and has been supplying sanitizing items since the COVID-19 pandemic was detected in the province and the country. Today, Panamax presented the school with five cartons of soap. Mr. Honey said the gesture is part of the company's community obligation to encourage hand washing, which has now become one of the new normal practices. Uh, obligation as a company to help educate uh, people on the importance of hand washing. So we've been uh, doing that since uh, starting of this year and pandemic that uh, came into PNG. So with LASIK, we have a good partnership with LASIK. Um, uh, it's a long-term partnership in both um, a hand washing program, uh, sports. So these are part, part of our ongoing um, program with LASIK. Medang resident judge Dr. Virgil Narkobi inspected the Jomba police station lockup and the Yagam Lutheran Hospital recently. The proposed isolation facility will be located at Yagam. The judge reviewed the two facilities following complaints of an outbreak of COVID-19 by detainees at the cell blocks and also the need for Medang to have an isolation facility for COVID-19 patients. Martha Louise reports from Medang. The National Court in Medang had earlier ordered that repair work be done at the Jomba Police Station cell blocks and that an update of the quarantine cell at Yagom is provided. The provincial administrator Clementare and the National Pandemic Controller were also issued directives to set up a separate quarantine cell for detainees to be tested for COVID-19. As a result, the Provincial Police Command Acting Superintendent Rubian Manjuk escorted Justice Narokobi, lawyers, PHECO Fidelis Waipa, and health officials to inspect the progress of work done at the lockup. The facility has separate compartments for different offenders, including females, juvenile, and a VIP cell block as well. Different categories of uh, details. Offenders showing signs of COVID-19 are first tested before being sent into the cell blocks. Them out, and they cleared, and then we can release them to... Yes. Those with negative tests are put into the same cell block, while those positive cases are kept separately, and health officials will further examine them. Inmates with mild to moderate symptoms are sent home for self-isolation, while those with severe symptoms are taken to the hospital for clinical care. The thing here is we need to have good control measures at the point of entry. Yes. Yes. Screen them properly. And then they the judge also inspected the isolation facility at Yagom Lutron Hospital. The facility has eight beds and still needs a lot of work to be done before it can take in COVID-19 patients. The building also needs to be fenced off to isolate hospital patients from COVID-19 patients, while it still needs oxygen cylinders and oxygen concentrators to be installed. The structure will need more resources and collaboration from all stakeholders, including the national and provincial governments and the six districts to have the facility operational. Martha Lewis, National MTV News, Medang. Medang National Court has ordered the Provincial Health Authority to prepare a report within six months. The report will focus on the work and the total cost of the isolation facility at Yagam Lutheran Hospital. This is to allow health authorities to start sending COVID-19 patients with mild to serious symptoms to the rural hospital. Last week, Justice Dr. Vergenaro Kobe inspected the progress of the proposed isolation facility at the Yagam Lutheran Hospital. The Medang National Court ordered that the report must include the outstanding work and cost outlined by the Medang PHA CEO Fidelis Wampa in his affidavit. 
In paragraph 8 of Mr. Wampas' affidavit, some of the outstanding work include changing rooms for health workers, eight patient rooms, and the purchasing of eight ventilators and oxygen concentrators. Also listed is the need for a new ambulance to transport COVID-19 patients, an incinerator for the provincial hospital to burn COVID-19 waste. In addition, proper fencing to separate COVID-19 patients from the hospitals in patient to avoid stigma and discrimination, and a 24-hour standby generator. Mr. Wampas affidavit also outlined the cost of rations and other medical consumables that would be needed. This report must also include recommendations outlined by the controller, Mr. David Manning, in his affidavit. The report must also include facilities to our CS and police personnel in the event that the detainee contracts COVID-19. So long as people are conscious of what their responsibilities are and put in the necessary effort. Copies of the report must then be provided to the national government, Medang provincial government, and to the six district development authorities of Medang for financial contributions to get the Yagam Rural Health Hospital operational. The matter will return to court on the 22nd of May 2022 to check if the parties comply with the court orders issued. Martha Louise National, MTV News, Medang. 33 pioneer students from Kwikila Community Health Workers Institute graduated yesterday. The students were challenged to play their part by focusing more on people. Kwikila Community Health Workers Institute was established in 2018 and is the first privately owned institute in Central Province. It was a tough journey since its inception in 2018. Kwikila Community Health Workers Institute enrolled 66 students. Unfortunately, the number decreased to 33 who graduated yesterday. The outgoing students were challenged to play their part with true dedication. You go out there, you must take that person as an individual. Be a healer. Healer comes from the inner part of your us. Your medicine training, your health training, provides for you to provide the medicine. But if it comes from the heart, you are a healer. Most students who graduated were from the district of Bulolo in Morbe province. Representing the district was DDA Joseph Paru. Paru said with six health centers and 55 aid posts in the district, the graduates will have the upper hand in securing a job. That's why we see you students here who are going to graduate to go back and work in the aid post in Bololo. Because we need health services back in our districts and back in our LLGs in, and in our aid post. Clinton Iawasa, who represented the students, said despite the challenges faced while studying, they were able to get to where they wanted. Director for KTA, Lala Burana, said more buildings will be built in the years. I am building the high-rise buildings. There's three, four-in-one classrooms going to be built, staff houses to be built. I go to build a library. I go to build a, a bigger mess and a recreation hall for my students <coughs> because my number is increasing to a big level, big number. So, And then I have to build more dormitories. So I'm expanding. I'm going down to, to the backwards of the institute. Podivai National MTV News. Women in rural Papua New Guinea are key players in the production of fresh produce and other agricultural products. Every year on October 15th, United Nations member countries commemorate the International Day of Rural Women. And PNG UN Women partnered with the Department of Community Development to provide avenues where women in rural areas are empowered to be financially independent and market their produce in a safe space. 
In commemorating the International Day of Rural Women in Papua New Guinea, UN Women is emphasizing the importance of promoting safer market spaces for women to sell their produce and having better access to financial literacy. So far, UN Women is teaming up with local authorities to create safer and hygienic market venues through selected markets in all four regions. And as UN Women, we are the entity that was established in 2010 by the member states of the United Nations to focus on women's empowerment and uh, attainment of gender equality. So this day is very important uh, for us because in Papua New Guinea, the majority of people are living in rural areas. And therefore, the majority of women who are our primary target group of our work are also living in the rural areas. And these women who live in rural areas are a significant player in the development of this country. Women are the ones who are involved in the production of uh, most food crops. And uh, this year, the theme of Rural Women's Day is rural women cultivating good food for all. So when we look at the work that the United Nations, and in particular UN Women, together with agencies such as FAO, we really are uh, keen to celebrate the contribution that women are playing in producing good food for families. This year's International Day of Rural Women is celebrated under the theme Rural Women Cultivating Good Food for All. In the last two years, restrictions due to COVID-19 has immensely affected those in the informal sector. But women in Papua New Guinea are adapting to the new normal practices in the strive to produce quality food as a source of income. I think my message to Papua New Guinea is let's take a moment this Friday to celebrate and be grateful to the women who are working tirelessly to keep us well fed. The women who are working tirelessly to ensure that children go to school that uh, our families remain healthy, and let's give them opportunity to also venture into new things, to go into leadership. Let's give them opportunity and voice to also come out into the public domain and begin to participate in shaping the development of the country. In Papua New Guinea, where a larger percentage of the total population is involved in subsistence farming, programs run to assist women become more productive in the production of fresh produce is a need for rural women. Thekla Gunga, National MTV News. And now looking at the Nasband market report, the Kina closed unchanged at 0 0.2850 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina is buying 0.2775 US dollars, 0.3699 Australian dollars, 0.2312 Euro, and 30.95 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York closed, gold is trading lower, coffee and copper are closed higher, and cocoa closed lower. Crude oil is trading higher, palm oil and copper closed higher. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed higher, the ASX 200 is trading higher, and the All Ordinaries is trading higher. You're watching National MTV News. We'll be back with more stories after these messages. Stay with us. Welcome back to the news. Twelve private security firms will be engaging with the Royal Papua New Guinea Constabulary in a neighborhood watch partnership. Each security firm were presented with a two-way radio base unit for installation in each of the operation centers. The partnership was created through consultation with and supported by the PNG Security Industries Authority. These base radios will use dedicated encrypted channel for shared communications. It will link police, 
with all the participating security firms in a single user group that will enable both parties to report on incidents. Uh, we have uh, base radios issued to each of our security firms, our partners. Uh, we have 10 security firms who are actively participating. Um, these are both international and, and local security firms, but established with logistical backup and proper operations centers. So uh, we have base radios issued to them, and, then, and a, a separate channel which has been encrypted, and it is a direct connection from uh, the security firm's base to our police operations center. According to NCD and Central Commander Anthony Wagambi Jr., the partnership is aimed at monitoring and minimizing petty crimes in the city. He says Police Operations Center will use call sign Zero Bravo, while the 12 security firms will use the names followed by base. So what's going to happen is when a guard or a escort vehicle or a supervisor's vehicle which is moving around checking the guards, when they come across an incident, no matter how small or how serious, whatever it is, but if it requires police attention, say it be a traffic accident as well, or a bag snatcher, or a stolen motor vehicle, they will report, the guard at the site, the scene will report to the base, and the base will report to police. Speaking on behalf of all the security firms, Altimax Managing Director Colin Copioto said this partnership will help benefit the city. It's a, especially as a homegrown small firm to be part of this big group and to partner with the police. It, I think uh, Altimax Security will be benefiting more from the, such initiative. And uh, apart from business, uh, this is Port Moresby is our home and we want the place to be safer for our you know, women and children our families, uh, and anything that we can do to contribute towards the uh, well-being of the city. Wagambi also stated that constant dialogue will take place to monitor and evaluate the partnership. He added that the dialogue will assess deficiencies and remediate if necessary. Podivai National MTV News. The Zionsville Christian School has become an academy with their first grade 12 pioneering students sitting for exams next week. The school is expanding from kindergarten to grade 12. Today saw the opening of a new classroom complex which houses 12 classrooms at their Nine Mile chapter in Port Moresby. With a growing population in the country, there is need for schools, especially in the primary and secondary levels of education to expand to cater for more students. The Zion Zil Christian Academy today opened an impressive new classroom complex to allow for expansion in their Nine Mile chapter. The Nine Mile chapter, we have uh, grades from kindergarten all the way up to grade three this year. Now, with our current population, we have about 150 students. The building itself houses 12 classrooms and now allows for the introduction of grades 4, 5 and 6. The previous classrooms could only cater for kindergarten to grade 3. The high school students are at another location in the city. The new classroom that we have here is, um, we have uh, 12 classrooms all in one, 6 at the bottom and six on the top. And uh, we have plans to have a uh, grade uh, four, five, six next year. And uh, it is, uh, they have their own toilets and uh, sour and uh, the wash basins and uh, everything in place. And the veranda, enough space for the students to move around. And uh, that's for the top and the bottom. The school is also focused on providing more opportunities for their students coming through their school system. They have been given the academy status because now they have kindergarten all the way through to grade 12. Their pioneering grade 12 students will sit for their national exams next week. And they are looking at expanding further as well. So it will need resources. And because it is a private school, we are struggling. And we don't receive funds from the government. We only rely on the fees that are paid by the parents, the school fees. Uh, these, are the, these are the support that we get. And then uh, with this, we manage ourselves to put up uh, facilities like this. 2021. We have achieved this mission and our vision by actually having a kindergarten up to grade 12 this year. And that is why 
Uh, the school also has plans for future, like uh, after grade 12, we'd like to step up to have uh, training institutions, colleges as well. Fideli Sukina National, MTV News. Chuka Sports is next. All the details after the break. Chukai Sports. Welcome to Chukai Sports. Melbourne Storm Centre Justin Olam was recently interviewed on MTV's Sports Scene program where he reflected on the past season and his hopes for himself and the team in 2022. Picked up on his bootlaces by NRL Premiership winner with the Melbourne Storm and PNG Kumu Centre, Justin Olam, spoke of the challenges faced by the Storm and other NRL teams after they had to relocate to Queensland due to the COVID restrictions in New South Wales and Victoria. All NRL teams had to temporarily relocate to Queensland to see out the remainder of the 2021 season. 100% it's been a roller coaster. Uh, we had to leave our, you know, our home again and go relocate up to Queensland and, you know, everything. Uh, yeah, it's been a, it's been a rough year. It's not where we wanted to be. You know, we were aiming to, you know, at least um, finish the top of the letter, but I'm saying that, you know, everything happens for a reason. And then, um, you know, we did our lessons this year. Mm. Um, you know, we'll come back strong again next year. So yeah, that award is. You know, uh, there's a lot of things going on in social media, whatever, but, mm. you know, whatever happens, happens. And, and I wasn't focusing on that. I was, I wanted to play uh, mm. the prelim and win the game, and that was, that was my focus the whole time, so, yeah. Despite falling short this season, Olam is confident that the Storm will once again be one of the leading contenders for the NRL title in 2022. I think we've got 10 weeks of uh, holidays, so... Um, I'm planning to, you know, I'm waiting this out and see if uh, I think a uh, kind of, in, you know, second week November, hopefully Victoria will, uh, you know, t um, take the lockdown off. And, you know, if they allow, you know, international travel and stuff like that, then I, hopefully I can come home and um, see my family in there. So at the moment, I can't go anywhere. I'm just, yeah, yeah. Lockdown, so I think, yeah, pretty much we only have um, 15 kilometer radius to travel, and wow, that's pretty much it. So, yeah, Axi Lovai, Chukai Sports. The PNG American Football Federations have been gathering interest among youths in the city of Port Moresby to play the sport, but the COVID-19 pandemic has slowed down their progress. But the Federation has had some positive outcomes with some new volunteers joining the cause. The Papua New Guinea American Football Federation has had a prolific year with a growing interest in the sport of American football gained through tryouts down at Ella Beach in the nation's capital. COVID-19 has put a halt to the progress, but the Federation seems to be growing with President Timothy Jim confirming that there are two volunteer development officers joining the team. We managed to run our football tryouts down at Ella Beach every Saturday, and then we keep our Facebook page and every other social media pages active. And there's a guy in Lee, my name of uh, uh, Eric Poya is a shipping officer with the Swai Shipping Agency. Uh, he did a little bit of research on his end and uh, he came in contact with me and he uh, saw an interest to uh, be a development officer up at the Lay. While on that, the other guy was also showing his interest. Uh, that is uh, uh, John Siuni from Chimbu. Uh, he's an NGO and a community worker up at uh, Kundiao. I'm he based in Kundiao. And then uh, he also like did the same with something like Eric. Uh, he want to you know be a voluntary department office up at Kundiawa. Uh, so volunteers will be given some training to help them build their capacity. Their main aim is to make it to the 2022 Oceania Championships next year, and they aim to have a competition by 2022 to help with identifying potential PNG reps in the sport. 
we have every equipment. That equipment we have at the moment will cater for four teams and uh, the Kumul Football League program will uh, come on board in uh, next year. Tackle football it requires a lot of time and people, so and we have to delay it for a while. Uh, we have to get to flag football and get a lot of uh, participants and uh, players and athletes. And then uh, we'll try and introduce us to tackle football. With a sport like American football new to Papua New Guinea, it is the Federation's aim to do more to promote the sport and recruit for the World Championships in 2023. The tournament coming up in... Uh, 2023, it's really uh, uh, challenging for us, you know, go to bread and we the public need to, you know, gain enough talent possible to put PNG at a level where, you know, we can be very competitive to other countries. Fidelis Sukina, Trukai Sports. And then on Trukai Sports, the weather details coming up next. Trukai Sports. True Kai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. A look at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region only. Cloudy with some showers and possible thunderstorms in Port Moresby and Popandita. The weather update was proudly brought to you by MoniPlus, with you always. That's been the new sport and weather for today, Friday 15th of October 2021. Until next time, pleasant viewing, be safe and good night.